Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Jet engines are among the most advanced feats of engineering the world has achieved so far. Not only are these marvelous machines incredibly complex, but an enormous amount of work goes into making sure they work properly before and after they are installed onto an aircraft. Jet engines work by sucking in air, with blades spinning at very high speeds. This air is compressed, then heated in the engine's combustion chamber, where the burning gases expand before blasting out through the nozzles at the back. This is called thrust. The jets of gas shoot backward, producing the force needed to propel the plane forward allowing for the incredible speed and efficiency that makes our entire aerospace industry so useful today. Of course, the bulk of these engines end up on commercial airliners, where they allow enormous aircraft like the Boeing 747 to perform extraordinary maneuvers and reach unprecedented speeds. To be sure of this high performance, however, Manufacturers put new engines through several extreme and intense trials. The testing procedures for a jet engine are exceptionally rigorous, as the engineers want to simulate as many potential scenarios as possible. One great example is the icing test. As jets travel at high altitudes where temperatures are lower, they need to be able to operate in extreme cold conditions while withstanding ice buildup that might even penetrate the engine. These icing tests help ensure new engines will perform as expected by blowing ice cold air into the intake. The engine's reaction is measured each time this is done. Later, the fuel injection system and other related components are checked to see whether or not there is any destructive ice buildup. Another major test that all modern engines need to pass before being installed on an aircraft is known as the chamber test. In this case, the engine is put into a massive chamber, started, and throttled at its maximum power for up to eight hours. This is to make sure that all of the components of the engine are operating at their highest capacities. Typically, this is the last test performed on a jet engine before it gets shipped out of the production facility to be installed on a plane. Of course, even after the engine is installed, the aircraft maintenance crew must service it regularly to ensure continuous proper functioning. There is also what is known as a complete overhaul, which is when the engine is completely disassembled, cleaned, and serviced before being reassembled. On average, this takes place every 3,000 to 6,000 flight hours or more, depending on the age of the engine and the general load and stress conditions. To keep up with the fast pace of production and the testing of newer and more advanced jet engines, sophisticated aircraft facilities are constructed every now and then. Even older facilities are being upgraded to meet up with the testing of newer and larger engines. A great example is the new GE Aviation Facility in Winnipeg, Canada, which opened in 2018. To ease the process of testing their latest state-of-the-art engines, Boeing, like other aircraft manufacturers, usually enter into mutually beneficial partnerships with the owners of these engine testing facilities. While commercial engines have their own set of testing rules, military aircraft have to adhere to slightly different but equally rigid standards. Indeed, testing, repairing, and replacing engines for a sophisticated weapon of war like the F-16 often requires crews to work in the field far away from the manufacturer's facilities. The F-16 is a single-engine fighter, and most repairs can be done while the engine is still on the aircraft. However, 
More extensive repairs necessitate that the engine be removed and wheeled into a hangar. Afterward, the repaired propulsion system is thoroughly tested before it can be designated flight ready. This is done in special facilities called hush houses. These are hangars with special chambers that effectively absorb the noise and blast from the jet. As technologically advanced as jet engines are, they still require rotors to suck in the air and provide thrust. Not too different from the propellers you might find on older model planes or, for that matter, a ship. Propellers are the source of propulsion for maritime vessels of all sizes, including massive cruise ships, submarines, and aircraft carriers. Not only does the manufacturing process of these enormous propellers require a number of important steps, but the actual technology involved is sophisticated to say the least. First, the predefined pattern is milled by a robot. After that, a sand mold is constructed using the milled pattern. Next, metal is heated into a liquid form and poured into the cast, which can hold up to 18 tons of material. After settling, the mold is broken open, revealing the rough propeller shape. This propeller is then machined, ground, and refined. Once it is in the perfect shape, it will be buffed, hand polished, and tested for use. Of course, one of the best ways to test a propeller is to attach it to a ship and see how it holds up. Some of the largest propellers in the world are made by Mecklenburger Metalgus GmbH in Germany. These massive pieces of metal can weigh more than 100 tons each and measure over 20 feet in diameter. The largest such propeller was made for the E-Class container ship Emma Maersk. The six-bladed monster propeller is a full 28 feet and weighs an astounding 131 tons. The manufacturing and testing process is virtually identical for propellers that will be attached to smaller boats. They are attached to an outboard motor and run at various speeds. This is done so that engineers can get an accurate idea of how they will perform once they are in the water. Testing appliances to optimize their performance goes a long way to protect the reputation of the manufacturer. It also gives the users more assurance. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.